The African Slender Snouted Crocodile has been in almost every one of my polls for this series, and though it has been continually beaten by almost every other crocodile, caiman, and alligator alive today, I believe that this animal is incredibly underrated, and deserves more interest. So in today's video, we are finally going to cover it. The genus Messistops means longest face, in an unusual reference to their narrow snouts. There's currently two species, the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile, described in 1844, and the Central African Slender Snouted Crocodile, being discovered in 2018, making it the first new crocodilian species in over 80 years. The genus evolved around 11.6 million years ago, and the two species diverged in the Miocene around 6.5 to 7.5 million years ago. There are two very strong cladogram arguments which I tend to avoid participating in, but today, these are highly relevant. The messy stops has been classified by two studies to be an osteolaminae, using DNA sequencing. However, other studies have concluded the messy stops is not a part of osteolaminae and is instead a part of crocodilinae. The debate will probably rage on until a resolution is met in a conclusive study. The main difference between the messy stops and other crocodiles of Africa include their specialised slender snout used for catching fish, convergently evolving to fit a similar niche to that of the Indian gharial or false gharials of Asia. As you'll see later on with their hunting behaviour, they are more like the false gharials overall. In addition, they are also far smaller than that of the Nile crocodile or West African crocodile, only growing 3 to 4 metres in length. However, they are still larger than the African dwarf crocodile. Though the West and Central African slender snouted crocodiles are two distinct species, I'd like to go over the universal behavioural and physical traits of the African slender snouted crocodile since they are still quite closely related and hold a lot of the same traits. The African slender snouted crocodile is well adapted for subtropical forests, rivers and lakes, though they do awkwardly venture onto land with their terribly adapted locomotion to bask and also hunt reptiles, amphibians and mammals. This is rather unique, and they hold a rather broad diet, which is why I make more parallels with the false gharial than I do with the gharial, which, as many of you will know, is specialised in piscivory. These creatures are opportunistic, and cannibalism of younger species members is pretty common. When it comes to basking, sometimes a slender snouted crocodile will grow desperate for the sun, and instead of basking on a beach, they will climb up a tree, sometimes over a waterway or on a fallen branch. They are surprisingly well adapted for this behaviour, using their sharp claws to hang onto the bark, tails for balance, and their sensory adaptations, such as good sight, in order to judge their surroundings. Though this may look hilarious, this isn't exclusive to the Western Central African Slender Snouted Crocodiles, with also the New Guinea Crocodile, and presumably Howe's New Guinea Crocodile, the American Crocodile, the freshwater crocodile, the alligator, and the Nile crocodile using this technique in order to sunbathe and also just traverse. They usually spend their time in vegetated areas, not only because they are ambush predators, but also because they are not the apex predators of their region. They face threats such as leopards, and their young have to worry about birds and spotted necked otters hunting them. When they feel threatened, they will bellow and hiss being some of the most vocal crocodilians. These animals are mostly solitary, except for in breeding season, where from January to July, the female will approach a male in the water, and a mating ceremony will occur. Unlike most crocodilians, these animals do not lay a large amount of eggs. Females will nest from the beginning of the wet season, and will have around 15 eggs, and bury them in mounds. The eggs will hatch after 110 days of incubation, being one of the longest of any crocodilian. The reason for their long incubation period and low amount of eggs is because the African dwarf crocodile is far more vast and overlaps with the messy stops mating season. They too bury their eggs, and their incubation period is around 100 days. This means there is high competition around the nesting season, being very restricted in nesting opportunities for both species. The female must guard her nest, with plenty of predators being willing to raid it though the eggs are usually quite large to counter any small animal that sneaks into the mound. The offspring will vocalise to show they are hatching, with the mother being necessary for the hatch to succeed. The West African slender snouted crocodile, Messistops cataphractus, 
and the Central African Slender Snouted Crocodile, Mesistops Leptorhynchus, have a few key differences when discussing them as species. While the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile has a heavy armouring, the Central African Slender Snouted Crocodile has smoother skin. The Central Croc also lacks the crest found in the West species. Their ranges are also largely different, with the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile being found in West Africa, what a surprise, and the Central Slender Snouted Crocodile being found in Central Africa. Now you've learned that riveting information, we must go into a bit of geography to explain why these are separate species. The thing that separates the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile from the Central African Slender Snouted Crocodile is the Cameroon Line. The Cameroon Line is a long chain of volcanoes that separates both species, suggesting one expanded out east or west, becoming a separate population. This happened anywhere from 8 to 6 million years ago, making them fairly recent, and why it took almost 150 years for us to distinguish them. In 1996, their status was classified by the IUCN as data deficient, though a 2014 report brought them to the status of critically endangered. Currently, only Ghana protects the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile, with no other countries using direct authority to prevent the messy stops from becoming locally extinct. Rapid development has led to an unsustainable amount of habitat destruction, adding to this, the popular trade of the species and other crocodilians as illegal bushmeat has led to further decline. Furthermore, their relatively low breeding rate makes them less likely to recover population-wise in comparison to that of the African Dwarf Crocodile. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums organisation counts around 48 of these animals in zoos, meaning they could be a valuable contribution to breeding programmes. However, as with the gharial breeding programmes, they are rarely shown to be useful in the long-term recovery of crocodilians, so we have to be cautious when resorting to this measure. Fortunately, many organisations are committed to the reintroduction and conservation of these animals. If you can, donating to these organisations or just sharing this information on social media will help bring more attention to these wonderful animals. If you can, donating to these organisations or sharing information about these animals may help people care more about these bizarre crocodilians. The African Slender Snouted Crocodile has been a species that has mainly gone under the radar due to its lack of studies and information. This animal is truly unique for a multitude of reasons, and I hope we have identified those in this video. Thank you very much for the continued support on this series. I hope to bring more content to you all soon. Also, a huge thank you for 1,000 subscribers, if we reach it by the time this video goes out, I don't know. But, you know, it, it's been an amazing journey and I really appreciate it. For the votes on my next video, we have the freshwater slash saltwater crocodiles. We have the caimans genus, featuring that of the Yakar caiman, the broad snouted caiman, and the spectacle caiman, and the Philippines slash New Guinea crocodiles video. So, vote for that in the community YouTube tab. Thank you very much once again, and goodbye for now.